You're live. Hey guys and uh, ladies out there. We've had a few questions come up here recently, more recently, on how to take the 3x4 um, electric <clears throat> ray sanding system with the foam pads and get down into some profiles, whether it's for um, scuff sanding for a good mechanical bond for a primer, or um, just preparing that surface in general for um, a finish. Um, there's lots of different approaches that we have to that. A lot of it is working with the system and hopefully this video will shed some light on how to approach those applications. We, of course, um, at the moment, we have a half inch foam, we have a 10 millimeter foam, and we have a five millimeter foam in the Surf Prep foam abrasive pads in an extensive grit range. The half inch foam is very flexible. You can wad it up in the palm of your hand and it'll disappear. The 10 millimeter foam and the five millimeter foam is a denser foam. The 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter is just twice the thickness of the five millimeter. And there's reasons and there's applications on why we might use the five millimeter over the 10 millimeter. And a lot of that has come through trial and error with users of the system and the product. One thing that we get asked often is, especially with the half inch foam, if you're sanding linear in a linear motion on a very sharp razor edge, that razor edge, and I've got a three quarter inch piece of plywood here to show you the, sh the, this, the sharpness. This just came off of a table saw on a cross cut. The sharpness of this edge, if you sand with the three by four tool, in a linear motion, this is a razor blade, okay? So with that being a razor blade, at some point, the hot melt adhesive is going to give because of that razor sharp edge and the foam is gonna go open up and you're gonna have a slice through the pad there. There's a way that we approach that to eliminate that, okay? Before we get into um, this razor sharp edge, I'm gonna take my half inch foam, this is grade medium. This is gonna give us a cut of like a 120 grit. And I'm gonna take this, this is a stepped profile on, um, on this particular five piece door. And it has been painted, it was painted. And I just wanna show you between the half inch, the 10 millimeter and the five millimeter, how we would approach these steps here. One thing you wanna remember is that when you're spraying finishes, and you're painting and you're finishing, you're staining, that is an art. What a lot of people don't understand is that sanding is just as much of an art as finishing, painting, staining. So it's important that you know that. That's another reason why the Surf Prep sanding system is so compact and small, yet durable and can be aggressive, but it's small with your hand close to the workpiece so you have better control especially in these steps. The moment you grab a sander where your hand comes an inch up off the head of the tool, you lose control, you lose ergonomics. So we're gonna put the half inch pad on here in grade medium and just follow along. I've got the tool <clears throat> set at 9,000 RPM and we're just gonna follow along. I've got it hooked up to a vacuum, you might hear vacuum, but we're gonna follow these steps here. So, you'll notice that with that sanding motion, I followed this line, and what happens is the half inch foam, it'll collapse. It's designed to do that. It's designed to collapse. Um, and you'll notice that that area is scuffed. Now on this corner here, I let the tool drop down a little bit, and we burnt that edge just lightly. If you're sanding primer, that oftentimes is okay when you have that slight burn. To minimize that burn, you can move away from medium and you can step down to a medium plus. And what I mean by that is when you step down, you're going from a 120 to a 150, moving towards a 180 scratch. So less aggressive. The other thing you've got to remember 
is that your downward pressure that you exert on the surface is going to uh, take an effect there. Now I'm gonna put the 10 millimeter, this is medium, like a 120, and I'm gonna do this same step. Actually, I'm gonna turn the door around, and I'm gonna do the same step here. I actually like to be kind of off the edge when I'm sanding, so that I have nothing in my way. <clears throat> so if you can follow this. Now, another thing you're gonna see real quickly, Two things here happen. Same grit, medium, as the half inch. And you're going to see because of that density of foam in the medium on the 10 millimeter, you can see the difference in how much material we removed. Now, at the same time, that 10 millimeter foam gives me enough back pressure or stiffness to stay in that profile and not collapse into the profile. So what you might want to do in a case like this is if you're getting too much action is jump from a medium and go all the way up to a very fine. And that very fine is going to act. It's going to give you the finished scratch of like a 320, but you'll notice that you'll get the scratch and you'll get the area scuffed for the mechanical bond that you're after. Okay. So now I want to jump to the five millimeter and this one here happens to be a medium plus. That's just what I grabbed and we're gonna take the five millimeter, you'll see that the five millimeter will stay in this step just like the 10 millimeter and it will not collapse. But I'm following that line. And remember, the longer you stay in one position, the more dwell time the abrasive grain has with the con in contact with the surface, the more material you're gonna remove. I'm gonna lift this up now and I'm gonna do this next step. It's always easier to have the door on a flat surface and come into it. And you, you tend not to get that, that drop off. So, if you're sanding a complete job, you'll develop that muscle memory to hold that line with the sander. And that's a way that you can get through all this work with the three different thicknesses and densities of the foam. If I'm working with you in your shop and we've got a rolling rack of 40 doors and we've got to buzz through all of this, I'm going to figure out which combination of these is going to give me the best result. I'm probably, myself, I'm going to gravitate towards the half inch and probably the 10 millimeter in a very fine to get through and scuff through all this to get a good mechanical bond. Keep in mind though, that you can bring that down to a medium plus, you can even use a fine. So, um, when you're on the surface of the door, you get that whole area. By the way, my downdraft table is not on, and I just scuff sanded the whole top of this door, and there was no dust uh, out in the open air space. It's all being collected pulled up through the vacuum holes, through the hose, into our vacuum. Now, cuts, cuts in the half inch foam. <clears throat> We've had people ask about, if you're buying your doors out from somebody, um, there's a, um, if, if the doors are coming to you with very sharp edges, and um, we all know that the sharper the edge, the less um, retention we have for material to hang on that edge. So we need to break that edge. Oftentimes, people will use a sanding block with a piece of sandpaper on it, and they will hit that real quick. I've had a lot of um, factories, a lot of OEM large kitchen cabinet manufacturers use 10 millimeter and grade medium plus or medium. <clears throat> and instead of sanding like this, now we just broke that edge. We just broke that edge, but at some point, if we keep driving this tool on that edge, we're going to, that edge, after you hit enough of them, is gonna put a razor cut in there. Even more so, more quickly, with a half inch foam. Because people tend to, when you use the 10 millimeter, I can only push really that hard. 
So that, that back pressure of the pad, this is gonna have a more difficult time cutting through this pad, but if I use the half inch, do you see how much I can collapse? And if I'm doing that, at some point, that razor edge can cut through there. What I'd like to do is show you this. So if you have your doors, they're all needing edge break. Take the door. And you've just broken all of your edges. And you see the difference here. We're spreading out the face of the abrasive. We're using 80, 75, 80% of the pad instead of just one line. So we're really hoping that helps you extend the life of your pads. I got some pretty exciting things on the horizon where um, we've been doing some things chemically with the collaboration I've had. Uh, we'll leave it at that for a pad life. So let's take an actual door. Here's a five piece door, same thing. If you're getting this in a shop, that other piece was just a piece of three quarter inch plywood. You're just gonna come in here. Break all those edges, all right? We've had some people, I'm gonna jump I'm gonna to jump to a door that has some color on it, some stain on it, and I wanna show you something real quick, um, the difference between a 120 grit sanding pad on the 10 millimeter foam on this edge versus sandpaper. If I hit this edge with the 120 grit foam, you will see here, you know what? It's better here. <clears throat> you can see that white line. That white line, we just removed all that stain, but we did not change the 90 degree corner. We just lightly rolled it over so that now if we spray stain on there, we've got edge retention. We got that we've got a surface that's going to accept the stain and not be like a razor blade. What I want to show you though, is let's say we take um, a 180 grit surf prep film and if I had a pad saver, I don't right here at the second, but if I had a pad saver, I'm just gonna use a thin interface pad to demonstrate we will change the shape of the door. We won't just prep it, we're going to actually change the shape. Now, you can see that eight inch spread, that white line is now a huge area where we completely took and changed the shape of the edge, which we don't want to do unless you're distressing. If you're doing something that is very um, unique and different and there's distressing that needs to be done, man, you can get real creative with these foam pads. The same thing will apply whether it's film, some people say, well, we'll paper level sand. We'll paper level sand. Here's our three by four paper. And if we go to this edge here, about the same number of sanding strokes, and you see that we change the shape of that door. That could be the case really on anything that you're sanding. What I wanted to show you is we have variety packs, paper, film, and our screen abrasive. In the variety pack comes a pad saver, a half inch interface pad, and all of the different grits from 80 to 320. This is all the paper. Here's all the film. Here's all the screen. Then one last thing, is we actually have a variety pack of different interface, all of our different interface pads, and a brand new backup pad. J-hook. J-hook. 
Was that a question or? It's a J hook backup pad. Oh, it's a J hook backup pad. The reason, <coughs> excuse me, the reason for that is when we introduce an interface pad to the backup pad, we need a longer fish hook style of hook to latch into the interface pad so it doesn't squirt around or swim on your tool. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to add to this, Hannah, I was gonna go grab something for the furniture people real quick to show them something. And uh, if you wanna add to that, or we could do another live. We'll do another one. Perfect. This is good. Um, I hope this helps, and I hope it gets you through your work more effectively, more efficiently, because that all equates to um, uh, lean sanding, and lean sanding turns into profitable jobs. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Have a great day.